Get ready, Ohio. FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, is coming to the Buckeye State. And to kick things off, you can get started with $100 in free bets as an early sign-up bonus. Plus, when you sign up today with promo code OHIOSB, you'll be all set for when FanDuel goes live in Ohio. Then you can bet on all your favorite teams and all your favorite sports with $100 in free bets. Just download FanDuel's top-rated sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Ohio, this is your chance to get in on the action. Join today with promo code OHIOSB. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. 21 plus and present in Ohio. Bonus issued in non-withdrawable free bets that expire seven days after FanDuel accepts its first real money sports wager in Ohio on one Unique user identity verification required. Offer ends on the go-live date. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. This episode is brought to you by Dragon Ball Legends, the ultimate Dragon Ball experience on your mobile device. Dragon Ball Legends is the first card-based fighting mobile game based on the widely popular Dragon Ball anime series. It features Dragon Ball art recreated with high-quality 3D characters and environments, and the official voices. Play as Shallot, the original character of Dragon Ball Legends, and experience a new adventure with Goku and all your favorite Dragon Ball fighters. Intuitively controlled your fighters. Use simple card-based attack gameplay to unleash combos and amass enough energy to trigger the powerful team-based attack. From Kid Goku to Beerus, you can collect and train all your favorite characters. Fight in real time against Dragon Ball fans from around the world. Battle in friendly matches or compete in leagues to rank up the leaderboard. Unite with friends to defeat powerful foes in co-op. And now, Legends Festival is on! So you can get up to 300 free summon tickets. Are you ready? Download Dragon Ball Legends today. Available for free on both iOS and Android devices. Welcome to the Fantasy NBA Today podcast. We're 25% of the way through the season and the great leveling has leveled. We're all flattened out, everybody. Not completely. That's a bit of a gross overstatement, but we're getting there. And you're starting to see where the dust is settling. You can also see, for the players that haven't reached full levelhood yet, which direction they are trending in their leveling process. A good example of this would be someone like a De'Aaron Fox, who got off to an unreal start this year, shooting like 55% from the field, and 85% at the free throw line, and he was a, like, he was basically on the turn. What was he, number 12, 13, 14, something like that? And it's not that he's falling off, because that's the thing. It You know, once you have a month, or whatever number, I mean, we talk about a month, a little over a month, of big numbers in the bank, a week or two, or whatever it is, for someone like Fox, I think it's one week now, he's been more like a top 90 guy, you know, that's not going to move him all that much. So he's gone from number 14 down to number 22. But this is part of the leveling. Sometimes it's abrupt and jarring. Like Larry Markinen, I mean, he had a better ball game yesterday, but he had a few where he was just a disaster. And he fell from, you know, 17 or 18 down to like 33. And it happened quicker, even with a month of big numbers under his belt, which is... A little bit surprising. Usually it doesn't happen that fast. Usually it's more like what you're seeing from De'Aaron Fox, who is still playing pretty well, but not a first-rounder. And that leveling process, when you see it beginning to happen, and it's subtle, that creates an avenue to maybe make a trade. Talk to you guys for just a second about the idea of selling a player. I know on Friday I yelled at everybody about uh, like what it means to sell high on someone. Today, I actually just want to talk about the idea that the, the advice of selling a player is actually the safest advice a fantasy analyst can give. There's almost no way that a sell high recommendation can backfire for an analyst. And so... When I give that out, I want you guys to know that I'm not doing it willy-nilly. Because think this through with me for just a second. And then, by the way, this is not 
Because I know anytime I say anything on this podcast, there's thousands of you listening, one of you is going to be like, who's he talking about? It's nobody. It was actually me. I was thinking about myself, and I was like, oh, I've been telling people to sell on a guy like the Aaron Fox. Okay, that's a really easy recommendation to make. Not just because his percentages were stuffed with puffy, puffy numbers that we knew were going to come down a little bit, but just this idea of like, oh, hey, sell high on this guy. And if someone gets a guy back who's like number 35 or 40 and is a very safe play and there's no real risk involved, like what if you sold De'Aaron Fox and you got Pascal Siakam back? That would be a step down based on what we've seen so far this year. But we know, barring another big injury, Siakam is going to be a top between 30 and 50 guy. And so there's almost no way... For me to tell you guys to sell high on someone and to come out looking like a total idiot. Buy lows, on the other hand, those are really hard pieces of advice to give. Because if you give the wrong buy low, you might sell a guy who you liked for someone who ends up pooping their pants the rest of the year and you look like an idiot. So just bear that in mind. That when, just from a mental standpoint, it is much easier to tell someone else to sell high because you know they're going to get something decent back than it is to tell somebody to buy low. I don't think this is something that analysts are actively considering as they give out that advice. I think most of us are looking at the numbers and saying, hey, this is a guy who's overperforming. This is a guy who's underperforming. But I do think that if you look back at it, it's really hard to find a sell-high recommendation that really, truly explodes in someone's face. It's a very easy wreck to give. And for that, I apologize. We all apologize. It's just the way that brains are wired. And it's an easier piece of advice to give. I don't know why that was kicking around in my head. It doesn't really change the way you guys are playing or the way I'm going to give out advice going forward. It's just a thing that occurred to me and I felt like I needed to just get it off of my chest at the beginning of today's episode of Fantasy NBA Today. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the program. I am Dan Bespris. D-A-N-B-E-S-B-R-I-S. We've got a big, big Monday to go over. So we probably should start doing that, and we'll just start at the top. It wasn't a huge, I missed 10 games, but I felt like they were pretty stuffed with things. And it's also quite rare that if we're going to go through this stuff chronologically, we had the biggest news of the night in the very first game of the night. And no, that big news was not Kristaps Porzingis putting up one of the lines of the year. It was actually Carl Anthony Towns who crumpled into a non-contact heap in the middle of the third quarter. And we all thought, well, that's the end. And thank goodness we were wrong. It's not a good injury, mind you, but it's not season ending. Cat has a pretty bad calf strain, which I, to call it just a calf strain, it almost feels like it minimizes it. It's like Dame had one and he was back in 12 days and now he has another one and he's probably going to be back in two to three weeks. This one is a one to one and a half monther is the expectation on cat. And this stuff, you got to be real careful. Calves are, calves are so finicky. So it might be, assume it's a full six weeks and maybe even assume that it trickles ever so slightly beyond that. Obviously you have to hold on because this is a second round, second round player this year. Even a bad cat is still cat ultimately. Um, but from a, has it completely obliterated your season standpoint? No, it hasn't. It's going to be very hard for him to hit his ADP. By the way, he's not going to because his per game numbers are down and now his totals numbers are also going to be down, which is a shame because that was the one path he had to getting there. But it's Kyle Anderson time, who had actually kind of crept into near fantasy value of late anyway. He's around top 150 in about 20 minutes per ball game. I think you can pretty safely assume that Cat, who was getting 34 minutes a game, Probably 10 of those are going to slow-mo. I had someone on Twitter ask me about Nas Reed, and the reason my answer to Nas Reed is no is that they have Rudy Gobert. And I know what your follow-up question is. Dan, they had Rudy Gobert before, and they played Cat right next to him. Yeah, that's because Cat is Cat. He is an all-star level offensive talent who is, at times, not great on defense. But they figured, screw it. Cat's so damn good. We can make Cat and Gobert work together. 
You just put great players together, whatever they're great at, it'll somehow figure out a way to fit. Nas Reed has a decent fantasy game, mind you, but he's not a great player. He's a decent NBA big man. They are not going to shoehorn two bigs together to get Nas Reed a bunch of extra playing time. He'll get some. No question, he'll get some because now he's the backup center behind Rudy Gobert instead of Cat being the backup center behind Rudy Gobert. So Nas is definitely going to get more playing time than he got before. But, you know, we're talking about a guy, if we're just exclusively focused on Nas Reed, you're talking about someone who went from very few minutes to relatively few minutes. He's going to go from 13 minutes a game to, like, 19 minutes a game. Which, by the way, because of his fantasy stats, that does actually put him, like, kind of close to value, but not at value on the other hand and we actually saw this before uh because cat missed what two games was it two games earlier this year it wasn't much but slow-mo slipped in there and played 31 minutes in one of them might have only been one game did cat only miss one game i gotta double check on this i gotta i gotta know now did he miss two uh how <laughs> he missed one game quick healer so maybe we'll get him back in four to six weeks instead of six plus uh, on the slow-mo front, Kyle Anderson, in that one game where he played 31 minutes, he had 16 points, three rebounds, six assists, three steals, and shot six out of seven from the field. Get ready, Ohio. FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, is coming to the Buckeye State. And to kick things off, you can get started with $100 in free bets as an early sign-up bonus. Plus, when you sign up today with promo code OHIOSB, you'll be all set for when FanDuel goes live in Ohio. Then you can bet on all your favorite teams and all your favorite sports with $100 in free bets. Just download FanDuel's top-rated sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Ohio, this is your chance to get in on the action. Join today with promo code OHIOSB. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. 21 plus and present in Ohio. Bonus issued in non-withdrawable free bets that expire seven days after FanDuel accepts its first real money sports wager in Ohio on one Unique user identity verification required. Offer ends on the go-live date. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. It only happens once a year. JCPenney's cyber deals are back in-store and at jcp.com. Through Wednesday, fill your cart with deals like Yes Please Diamonds and Gemstones now $19.99 each. Or use your coupon inside the JCP app to save up to 50% on small appliances and cookware from top brands like Keurig, Cuisinart, Calphalon, and more. We got your holiday. JCPenney. Offers good on select items through 1130. Exclusions apply. Jewelry excluded from coupons. See store or jcp.com. This episode is brought to you by Dragon Ball Legends, the ultimate Dragon Ball experience on your mobile device. Dragon Ball Legends is the first card-based fighting mobile game based on the widely popular Dragon Ball anime series. It features Dragon Ball art recreated with high-quality 3D characters and environments and the official voices. Play as Shallot, the original character of Dragon Ball Legends, and experience a new adventure with Goku and all your favorite Dragon Ball fighters. Intuitively control your fighters. Use simple card-based attack gameplay to unleash combos and amass enough energy to trigger the powerful team-based attack. From Kid Goku to Beerus, you can collect and train all your favorite characters. Fight in real time against Dragon Ball fans from around the world. Battle in friendly matches or compete in leagues to rank up the leaderboard. Unite with friends to defeat powerful foes in co-op. And now, Legends Festival is on! So you can get up to 300 free summon tickets. Are you ready? Download Dragon Ball Legends today. Available for free on both iOS and Android devices. And it's long been the case with Kyle Anderson that if he gets starters level minutes, which happened uh, intermittently in Memphis during his time there, and you can just roll the clock back with him, San Antonio, whatever, when he gets starters level minutes, he is very much a starter level fantasy player. I love doing this game with players where you're like trying to figure out if it's going to happen. Just go through... Kyle Anderson's game by game for like the last five years and look at the numbers he put up anytime he hit basically 27 minutes or higher. Sometimes you could actually squeeze that down to 26 minutes or higher, but call it 27, call it 28, whatever the hell you want to call it. Almost every single game that he got 27 minutes 
the stat line looked interesting. Like, I'll just, I'll just pull one out of my butt. Look at last year, where, what? I think he was still in Memphis last year, right? It doesn't even really matter. Uh, just scrolling really quickly down the board. Right around the end of the calendar year, December 29th, he played 20, 29 minutes. Uh, sorry, that's January 9th. He, missed, he played 29 minutes, 14, 7, and 8, two steals and two blocks. He's not going to get you many three-pointers. Uh, December 15th, he played 27 minutes, 13 points, 11 rebounds, three steals, two blocks, three assists. Oof. 31 minutes, December 11th last year, 16, 7, and 4, three steals and a block. Wait a minute, I found one where he played minutes and he didn't do much. Uh, eight points, four boards, two assists. Oh, no. But you know what? You blend that one in with all the others and you wouldn't even notice it. We have a month to month and a half long streamer on our hands here in slow-mo, and you do not want to miss that opportunity. He's not going to go top 50. He's not going to go top 50 because, you know, even if you give him a bunch of minutes on this team, he's still behind Anthony Edwards and D'Angelo Russell, and he's probably behind uh, Jalen Noel in number of shots taken, and Gobert is out there scooping up all the rebounds, so that's going to make that a little bit tougher for Anderson. So, you know, it's not going to be quite as simple to just roll up stats, but he's going to be facilitating. He's going to be getting steals. He's going to be getting blocks. He's going to shoot a good field goal percent. There's a lot, a lot to like about what slow-mo should be able to do over the next month, month and a half. So add him in as many places as humanly possible. Head-to-head, roto, whatever, you name it. It's an opportunity to get someone who can probably roll top 80 for a while. I mean, that's a seventh-round pick. Get a free seventh round pick for a month and a half on one roster move. That's that's just good news all the way around. Just realized it has a super weird volume issue going on with the show. Hopefully that uh, got sorted out. And then we can rumble along. Atlanta, thoroughly uninteresting fantasy club. So, nothing. Philly, slightly more interesting fantasy club. Joel Embiid came back for the Sixers. That rendered B-Ball Paul unusable. You can go ahead and move along from that stream. D'Anthony Melton, the... The same process again with him, where he's trying to figure out what his role is. Every time something changes around him, Melton's got to figure out what the Swiss Army Knife deal is going to be for him. He's still very much a startable asset. He's great. Shake Milton's been rolling lately with no Tyrese Maxey. Keep that going. Those two guys are very easy streams. Nothing changing there. Cleveland. Um, I mean, I think they probably need some of their big men back. There hasn't been an obvious pickup here. There was a, a fleeting Brief fleeting hope that Dean Wade could do enough, but nah. Nah. Donovan Mitchell uh, finally had a slower ball game. He dropped out of the first round yesterday. He's now number 13. Um, Most likely, he will continue to trend in the downward direction. Remains to be seen exactly how far, because he's gotten off to a crazy good start. But that's another one of those ones where you're like, all right, well, maybe I can squeeze a second rounder out of this dude and i think i would do it because again what's the worst case scenario if he continues at a second round clip you traded him for equal value if he slips you feel like you've won the sell high the easiest recommendation in fantasy basketball fantasy sports because even when you get it wrong you still kind of get it right toronto on the other hand had all kinds of storylines rolling around with them scotty barnes came back came off the bench and had a pretty good ball game uh, Pascal Siakam came back, started, and had an okay ball game. Gary Trent shifted to the bench and actually had a slightly better ball game as a reserve. Still played 26 minutes. I think I'd like more, but, you know, it is what it is. Thad Young continued to start, and they got a win, so it's possible they might just keep rolling with this one. Thad Young still started. No steals for Thad. He was basically a steal or two away from this being actually the exact kind of streamer line that I would have wanted from him. You know, good percentages, seven rebounds, three assists. Just needed a steal from you, Big Dad. Hang on to Thad Young. This is a good stream. If he's starting, I'm rolling with him. I mean, it feels like there's a weird chance that they just kind of let Thad start. Precious Achua would be the one guy you look at, you're like, could that dude take Thad's spot? I I don't know that he will. Achua's not that big. I know they got him playing center, but Thad is a longer player. I would argue better defensively. Maybe better offensively, too. Maybe this is something that sticks. We might be squeezing a a real long effort out of Thad. Well, we'll see. We'll see. I thought for sure he'd get moved to the bench here. Uh, Wancho Hernan Gomez started at small forward. If if your retort was, hey, where is Scardy Barnes going to go when he starts? You take Wancho's spot. Now, if Trent moves back into the starting lineup, 
they would shift Siakam up to center and Thad moves back to the bench, at which point I wouldn't stream him anymore. But if they like this look of Gary Trent bench gunner, Thad might get to start for a while. We shall see. The one player that definitely took a hit in this one was Chris Boucher, who still got 22 minutes but didn't really get to do anything with them because there were a lot of guys that do stuff uh, on this club now. And with two of those do stuff guys coming off the bench in Trent and Barnes, it kind of took a thunder out of Boucher's, hey, I'm the guy who comes off the bench and does stuff routine. If you notice, we're playing a little game of who does stuff with Toronto. It's not a fun game. Or it's maybe a kind of fun game, but the title stinks. Game needs a new name. Regardless, I think you give Boucher another game on your bench because 22 minutes actually oftentimes is enough for him, but I'm not going to get too attached there uh, because guys are coming back, and if Otto Porter or Precious Chua shows up, then you know that thing's going to get blown up. Charlotte needs help. Someone please call a hospital for this team. LaMelo Ball, Dennis Smith Jr., Gordon Hayward, Tara Rozier. Four starter level guys, I don't know if you want to call Dennis Smith Jr. an actual slated starter for this team, but you could, are out. Certainly at least three, if you want to look at it from that perspective. And it's left the team a bit hamstrung, to say the least. Theo Maladon, 39 and a half minutes, 11 points, four boards, eight assists, three steals. If all those guys are still out for another ball game, you definitely start Maladon. Uh, we don't have any additional information on them right now. Rozier was just dealing with a flu, so uh, it's quite likely that he's back at some point this week. Question is, you know, would it be tomorrow? Which is an overload day, but man, I'd carve out space for Maladon on an overload day, uh, provided you can handle what's probably going to be a little bit of an ugly number in the turnover department. But pretty much anybody that's upright on Charlotte right now probably needs to be started, with the possible exception of Mason Plumley, who, come on guys, I did warn you about this. He runs warm for a couple of weeks. Everybody's like, come on, Dan, you got to get Plumley on your list. He's got to be in there. Nah, he doesn't got to be in there. He's a stream type of guy. He gets hot. Things work out better. He, by the way, also benefits from having a point guard out there, as does Terry Rozier when he's in. Those guys need somebody to get them a little bit open sometimes. More so Plumley, to be sure, but it's a thing. Uh, if you're asking about Jalen McDaniels, meh, he had a good shooting game. Otherwise, he didn't really do anything. This is a, one of those nights where you look at it and his numbers were big time inflated by shooting 9 out of 12 from the field, and that boosted everything. But he didn't rebound, he didn't pass, he didn't get steals, he didn't get blocks. I'm not into it. Ubre's a go. Again, Maladon's your streamer here. P.J. Washington's a go. And uh, that's the ugliness on the Charlotte side. Boston, you can mostly throw this thing out. They gave Jalen Brown a night off. They're trying to do that against the Crutter teams of the NBA. And Marcus Smart, with a massive, massive game, finally pushed himself inside the top 100. Thank the Lord. Derek White, he's a start these days. I know that their guy's out. That makes it an easier call, but he's just a start anyway. Brooklyn beat Orlando, as they should. Kevin Durant decided he wanted to give Kristaps uh, Porzingis a run for his money in fantasy line of the night. Devin Booker did, too. We had 340 burgers yesterday. That was pretty sweet. Uh, I'm a happy camper right now because my first two picks in 30 deep, a 30-team league, uh, were Durant at, I think, five. I think at the fifth pick, which is pretty awesome. That's the earliest pick I've ever had in 30 deep in, like, I guess it's only six years, so it shouldn't seem that nuts to be that early, finally. Uh, but then Porzingis coming back at pick 55 or 56 or whatever that would be, coming back in the second round. Oh, man, was that a good night for Dano's 30-deep team. I'm in a, a Yahoo Public League where Nick Claxton got dropped. That's the dumbest drop I've seen in any of my leagues all season long. I don't know who did it, but I'm putting in a fat waiver bid on that dude because uh, Claxton is a 75 guy or higher rest of season, and ain't nobody coming for his minutes. Ben Simmons also left this game in the second quarter with knee soreness. There is no obvious pickup here. Joe Harris... Got extra minutes in this ball game, but if Seth Curry's running hotter than Harris, he would get those minutes. You just you you know you're rolling the dice. There's like a probably 60 40 chance it's Seth Curry and 40 that it's Joe Harris, but that's not a percentage I want to take a shot on. For Orlando, the bowl bowl fever dream continues. Gary Harris had a good ball game, but I'm not dealing with that outside of you know head to head leagues. Maybe you pick them up if their schedule's good for a few days, but Roto no chance. 
Franz Wagner was solid. He's been more like a 75 range guy after a slow start. Paolo Boncaro keeps killing you with free throws, turnovers, and sometimes field goal percent. He's much better on the points league side. And Caleb Houston played 31 minutes, but that's very much a tree fell in the forest type of scenario. Oklahoma City, the roulette wheel spins. Spin, spin, spin. Round and round it goes. Jeremiah Robinson Earl is where the little roulette ball. What do they call it? Do they call it a ball or do they call it a pellet? Do they call it a marble? Well, it landed on Robinson Earl, who has actually kind of quietly been pretty close to fantasy value lately. We talked about that at substantial length on Friday's podcast as a guy who's like, all right, look, he's this dude is like kind of grinding up against fantasy value. Thank you for that, like, eighth grade middle school dance reference, Dan. Not quite there, because the roulette wheel doesn't always land on him. If it somehow did, if finally OKC was just like, Jeremiah, you get to play 27 minutes a night, he'd be an ad. But in between these games, which are really nice, you only have one where he only gets 19 minutes. It's what's happening with Pokushevsky. Also, the advantage that Poku has is that in 20-some-odd minutes, he can get you three threes and three three-pointers on any given night and kind of maintain value without that fall-off-a-cliff type of stuff that would happen to a Robinson Earl in 18 or 19 minutes because all he does is roll up stats. He's very much a Thad Youngian kind of fantasy game where you got to be out there. That is to say, he's not going to blow you away with usage. Josh Giddy, who I still don't know why folks were drafting this dude like, basically ever. I think he's, what, outside the top 200 the last couple of weeks? He's outside the top 200 overall. It's just not there, man. It's just not there. <sighs> that guy was getting drafted, like, 60s? That was horrendous. New Orleans! Uh, they were down a few guys. No Larry Nance, no Brandon Ingram, no C.J. McCollum. And still, Jonas Valanciunas couldn't really find an avenue to minutes. That's not a great look for him. JV's just trending down. You know, it's why we said to dodge it. He was not in a good scenario this year. He's now number 133 and just dropping like a boulder. He's not far, actually, from a cut, honestly. Jose Alvarado was uh, decent in his CJ McCollum fill-in game. McCollum is questionable, by the, by the way, for the next one. So if you're looking to, for a potential stream to drop, Alvarado would be the one. Herb Jones looked really good in this one. He's he's a he's a player away. That's what's going on out there. Four steals, three blocks, including a critical charge drawn late in the ball game. Now, the beauty of Herb Jones is that even at his worst, he's still a top 140 kind of guy. So he's not going to bludgeon your game. But he needs those steals. He needs those blocks. And frankly, he just needs the guarantee of playing time, which doesn't come when Ingram, Nance, and McCollum are all back. I could write almost the same script for Trey Murphy, who does it with threes and rebounds and some defensive stats, and he also needs somebody to be out. Now, the beauty of it, on at least the, the uh, Murphy side, is that it does seem like one player is always out for New Orleans. Whether it's Ingram, who's been dinged up a few times this year, Zion's a risk to miss games, we know Nance is a risk, although he's not one of the starters, JV, at least, is pretty damn durable. McCollum has been missing more games lately, last couple of years, although this one is COVID. So, in my eyes, those guys remain streamers. I, I, don't, I don't feel like we can upgrade them beyond that. And that's okay. That just means that you have to be ready to put your right foot in and get your right foot out. Do the Trey Murphy, Herb Jones, hokey pokey whenever it's right. Chicago, they bounced back at a couple of really ugly games, and it seemed like the Bulls couldn't figure out what the hell their identity was, but they've won uh, a few tougher ones lately. Their schedule's been hard. I know they're 9-11 and overall, but they have looked better lately. They beat a Utah team that is still desperately missing Mike Conley. I, I admit I had no idea that he was the true engine of everything on that team. Also, Utah went 6-for-15 at the free throw line in this game. That kind of changed the outcome. Also, 14 turnovers. They only forced seven. And so Chicago just crushed them in the, pos the possessions battle. And you're generally going to win when you win the possessions battle. It's just kind of as simple as that. The good news here is that Kelly Olynyk was terrific. He's now in the 50s. Kelly Olynyk is now rolling as a sixth-round 
sorry, fifth round per game player on the year. He's also played in, I believe, every single one of their games. That's 23 for 23 on the Utah side. Let me make sure I'm getting that right. Yeah, all 23 games for the Jazz, who have, by the way, lost five in a row now. Uh, yes, the losing streak stinks, but they are still the nine seed, and they're like a game away from being higher than that. Thank you for that brilliant assessment, John Madden. Basically to say, uh, you know, Conley comes back, they win two or three games in a row. They could jump from the nine seed to like the four, and it really wouldn't be all that surprising because the West is bunched. That said, that said, uh, please get him back because if this losing streak continues, you start to think about the Jazz kind of blowing things up a little bit. And for a stretch there, it felt like we might get a whole year out of Olenek and Conley Guys that we drafted with basically just the goal of squeezing three months out of them, if that, to start the year. Well, it's been brilliant. Uh, We'll take what we can get, and let's just keep hoping for good stuff. Uh, Colin Sexton filling in here for Conley. He's now kind of stepped into a more consistent spot. He's a safe stream. Malik Beasley is also a safe stream right now. Jared Vanderbilt, they've capped him out in the mid-20s and minutes, which does kind of cap his value more near 100 range, and that's a disappointment, I'll admit it. Man, that's what's going on out there. Denver blew out Houston. Still no Michael Porter Jr. Still no Bones, who I think will probably be back for their next ball game. I can't imagine his his cold flu will keep him out much longer. Bruce Brown, still a stream as long as dudes are missing. Aaron Gordon, still, well, a weird ball game yesterday. I don't talk too much about Gordon. You know he's not someone that we target on this pod anyway. Jamal Murray, looking a lot more like himself these days. I think Gordon had some foul trouble. Jokic, basketball, once again, looking way, way too easy. I'm going to say it again, and at some point I'll just shut up about it. We're just, we, it's not we, you all that are yelling at me about Tara Eason, you're just a little bit too early. Please take the, my, my diction, my word choice there, very seriously. I'm saying two words about Eason. Two words early that's it not that he's not good not that he's not gonna be good not that his fantasy game isn't good all those things can maybe will be true but you are too early if i have to answer questions about everybody else that's in the like 120 to 150 range should i drop them and with this one it's should i add him it's very weird i get it like there's different storylines on these guys maybe he does trend up as the season goes he should because the rockets are still in tank mode as they should be Go one more year for one manana and then see if you can get it turned around after that. Uh, we're too early. I don't like, I hate squatting on players when you don't know. There's no finite timeline. You know, it's not, it's different than stashing an injured dude where you're like, all right, he's going to be back in two weeks. Finite timeline. Ah, well. Phoenix beat Sacramento. Good ball game. Devin Booker had the other 40 burger we were talking about, and uh, that meant that his teammates didn't have to do very much. Torrey Craig continues to be a low-end stream. Campaign has full-on run out of gas. He's actually been quite bad the last week and change on this Chris Paul stream. He is not a must-stream player right now. Uh, There's a very real chance that, you know, he bounces back in a game coming up if Paul's still not ready to go. Uh, But Campaign is not inside the top 200 over the last week, and that's, in my estimation, because he's just sort of not built to be a long-time starter. Also, his fantasy game is only kind of okay. He's mostly points, assists, threes, and the field goal percent is usually pretty low. Uh, and we got a lot of good stuff out of him before he ran the, before the tank ran empty. But the tank is empty. Chris Paul, please get your stinking butt back in there. Sacramento, we already talked about how De'Aaron Fox is cooling just a little bit, and you know, again, don't don't be too surprised there. He'll level off, and then everything will be fine. Malik Monk had one of his mega games, and if you can pick out the day that's going to happen congratulations i i can't so i won't and then indiana andrew nemhard a game winner the clock expired just as the ball left his fingertips and the pacers beat the lakers 116 115 no big storylines in this one benedict matherin had a nice ball game team as players do when they take on uh marquee teams like the lakers I think the only real notes, first of all, Tyrese Halliburton is on a serious run, but, like, what do we need to say about a first-rounder? He's a first-rounder. Miles Turner's rolling. Uh, 
And then, like, the young bigs with Indy, you just don't need to hold them. How many days in a row do I need to say that? Doesn't matter. I also told you guys TJ McConnell's job was not safe enough. You saw why. I know I get stuff wrong. I, I'm fully aware. I'm not going to get every single thing right. But you guys, you have to trust me. I watch enough of this stuff for enough years. And I make notes of these things where I think a lot of folks that have the short-term memory stuff. And they're just like, what about now? And I'm like, no, 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 no. Come on. We've, we've seen this. We've been, this, we've been, been down this road. My big takeaway from this ballgame, because there really wasn't much that changed for me on the indie side from what I said on yesterday's or the day before his podcast, LeBron tweaked his ankle early in this ballgame. He actually got off to a hot start. I think he had his first three shots. He had seven points. First seven points of the game for the Lakers, and then just went ice cold the rest of the way. And maybe we can blame it on the ankle. I don't know. But LeBron was a minus seven in a game the Lakers lost by one. And it's not a surprise right now when that happens. Austin Reeves, plus six. Once again, one of the best marks on the team. Russ was a plus one. AD was basically a break even. He was minus one, I think, in the ballgame. LeBron is actually the reason why the Lakers have lost some of these games, which is just not something we've ever said about Braun before. And yeah, you know, he, he dealt with... uh a foot thing, and then a groin thing, and now an ankle thing. And you can we can kind of blame it on that, but it's actually quite possible that this is the year we are finally seeing LeBron lose a quarter step. That's what it looks like, at least. When he was running things for the Lakers yesterday, they looked slow and they looked tired. When LeBron came out, the Lakers looked energized and fast. And maybe, again, maybe it was the tweaked ankle. It's still a possibility. But I also think that it's probably time that, you know, I had LeBron as a, a per-game first-rounder set to miss a bunch of ball games. He was one of those roto, lean roto kind of plays that we talked about before the season started. I thought getting him in the second round was a good deal because he probably beats that per game and then misses some games and comes out and, you know, by totals, he probably ends up somewhere near his ADP. I don't think he stays at 36. We're seeing a lot of stuff with him that's kind of worse than what you'd expect, especially the field goal percent at 45 and a half. That will most likely trend up because he's also missing stuff around the rim. Um, and I, I would have to think the assists come up a little bit, although with Russ doing a lot of orchestrating and like better at it lately, maybe it doesn't. But I think we probably need to ratchet our our target for LeBron down from mid to late first round per game to maybe more like second round per game. I think that's the fair way to look at it after watching him now in whatever it is, 13 games so far. And so a lot can still change because he's not at the great leveling yet. And we haven't really seen him healthy for more than about two games at a time yet this year. Uh, but he looks slower like it to the eye test. He looks slower you know who doesn't? Austin Reeves. He looks great. He's not a fantasy ad because uh, they're just sort of like a not enough for him when the other three high usage guys are all in the game. But damn, he looks good. He looks good these days. Again, you're not adding him. Uh, not at, not out, not in a 12 teamer at the very least. Um Schroeder, who we talked about, was only going to get to do enough when a star was out. He only had eight points. Lonnie Walker only had nine, and he got kind of yanked in and out of this ball game a bit. I think missed assignments played a role. Uh, there's a chance that that Walker with Schroeder back won't get to do enough. That was always kind of what we were looking at. Like, okay, this guy's getting more run because Schroeder wasn't around. Thomas Bryant not really making a difference in the same way. Um, but now that Schroeder's in there... I don't know if there are quite enough shots for Walker. I mean, certainly you'd hope that with LeBron, if he's going to take 22 shots, he better be making some of them, and he really wasn't yesterday. That was a bad, bad game for Braun again. So weird to keep saying that over and over again. Hey, we got a prize to give away. Uh, we're going to be doing it over on the Twitter's side. It's from our buddies at Manscaped.com. Hope you guys got something from Manscaped during their Black Friday or Cyber Monday deals. You can still, however, get something at Manscaped.com using our promo code ETHOS20. 
to get 20% off and free shipping. I saw a number of you guys on Twitter that reached out about this prize, uh, saying that you were thinking about getting something from Manscaped anyway. And maybe that's what you'll do if you don't win the prize. So hit me up over on social media at Dan Vesperus. Uh, I have my most recent tweet. It was sent like just after 11 o'clock a.m. Pacific time. If you want to try to hunt that thing down, all you got to do is make sure you're following and make sure that you reply to let me know you want to get in on the random drawing. Manscaped.com prize given away on social media today. Again, that is at Dan Bespris, D-A-N-B-E-S-B-R-I-S. Let me do a quick on-air check to see if anybody rated and or reviewed the podcast in the last 24 hours. And the answer is no. Come on, guys. I need you. I need you guys. I got. I need you to help me get to 850. Please. Maybe I'll bug some of you guys on social media that are reaching out for the prize. <laughs> sure, that's what I'll do squeeze these damn reviews out of you if it's the last thing I do. Uh, check out some of our amazing premium products at Sports Eso- Ethos as well, sportsethos.com, the website. Promo code BOGO to get two months for the price of one on any premium product at Sports Ethos, including but not limited to our Fantasy Pass, which includes premium Discord access, where you can ask questions of our pros 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And my immediate reaction to anything that happens in the NBA long before it goes on social media. Folks, have a lovely short Tuesday. We'll do, you know, whatever we need to do to prep for these, this short card over on social media tonight. Again, come hit me up at Dan Bespris on Twitter. Come get yourself entered in the Manscaped prize drawing. And if you don't get it, once again, Ethos 20, 20% off free shipping with our buddies over at Manscaped.com. We'll talk to you guys tomorrow, everyone. Tis the season for super fast internet. In fact, tis always the season for super fast internet. Switch to Frontier Fiber One gig service and make the holidays happier with upload speeds 25 times faster than cable. And with our whole home Wi-Fi guarantee, we'll make sure everyone's new devices work in every room. Plus, you'll get a $200 Visa reward card on us. Uncable yourself. Get fiber internet from Frontier. Go to Frontier.com slash fast forward for complete offer terms, eligibility, and service performance details. Speak plan based on competitor advertised speeds and markets. Service is subject to availability. This holiday season, Peloton's got a gift for you. Get up to $200 off accessories with the purchase of a Peloton bike, Bike Plus, or Tread. And take your workout to the next level with accessories like non-slip grip dumbbells, a heart rate monitor, cycling shoes, and more. Peloton, motivation that moves you. This limited time offer ends December 25th. Visit OnePeloton.com to learn more. All access membership separate. Offer ends December 25th. Cannot be combined with other offers. See additional terms at OnePeloton.com.